Hello, this is going to be a short video about making response screens. What I mean by that are scenes where you, these are slides or locations where you show either a cab view or an overhead map view as the participant is getting to the scene. So for example, um, you might start a person in station and it's just a regular slide. And then these thing, these arrows here are location jumpers. That's more convenient for placing arrows anywhere you want as opposed to the arrow cluster you might typically see. And these location jumpers can be clickable or also go by time. So let's talk about a basic kind of response. Here's sort of you could take a Google map overhead, put a clock timer, a countdown timer, maybe put some text in and uh, then a location jumper. Now this it can be clickable, it can be also completely transparent and have it timed. So let's say after 30 seconds, it could go to the next, like over there. It just slipped, flipped over to the next slide. Uh, and there I've added in now a little more elaborate with a picture that you add in, like a picture of a little icon of an engine. And you see with fade in, fade out, you can make it kind of look a bit fluid. Now what I've done here is I've made invisible the audio clip and also the location jumper. So you're not seeing that. We'll see that when we're editing. And you can see now I'm at this slide here with a cab view. This is a basic cab view where we have uh, just a basic picture, text, and a clickable thing to make it more elaborate. We'll see, I could go to the next one. I could have it timed to go to the next one. Um, make it more elaborate. I can now put in not only the audio clip, now you see it kind of semi-transparent, so it's more obvious. Now clearly in your actual scenario, you'd make it fully transparent. There's the location jumper, similarly about transparency. Uh, the countdown timer, and then we made a sort of fun honk horn. There's an audio clip behind here that's invisible. So when I click on it, you can hear that people will, they'll, they'll really love that. They'll sit there for minutes and minutes honking the horn. So now I can wait for it to go to the next one. So there was that location jumper timeout. It went to the next one. And that's how I can kind of make a little bit of fluidity. So they're not looking at the same screen for a long time. And this siren may get very annoying. So um, you can decide whether or not to actually put it in here. So let's take a look about actually how, so I can time it so it goes eventually to the, uh, to the scene and I certainly can put in, now what, put in smoke or fire. This, what we'll see is this outline in the cab is actually a picture I've loaded on top. So let's take a look at how this scenario is actually done. First step is I've made my scenario, I call it responding examples, and I'm gonna put this scenario into the comment section so you'll be able to actually download it. So right now I'm at side A, I've made my scenario. If I go here and look at uh, these other slides I've made, their station overhead and etc., cetera, um, I don't want it to start at side A. So if I go to location menu, say manage location, once I've created my other slides, you notice here it says side A initial. What I need to do is to say, what's the initial slide it should start at? I don't want it to be side A. I want it to be, let's say station. So I click on station, I go here and say set as initial, and now station is the initial one. Now also, if the slides I made don't line up the way that I want them to, maybe I made some of the slides in a different order, I can just always um, just, re just move these around in any way that I want, reorder them. And this is gonna be important when we do the location jumper to kind of have a nice flow from the start to finish. So I'm gonna go back over here, and there's my station example, my station. I loaded a picture, I added some text, I added some text here and the location jumper. For those people not familiar with location jumper, you do plus utility location jumper. And in the location jumper, when I go back over here, you'll see uh, when I click the pencil tool, I can move to, that's where I, where do I wanna move to? Either the next location in order, or I can set a specific slide to jump to. Um, another thing here, move on timeout. This is gonna say, do I wanna move on a timeout or not. This one is saying don't. Don't time out and don't move on a timeout. Um, and if I do time out, we'll see in a later one, it'll say delay before move. So if I do set it to yes, move on timeout, that's the number of seconds before it moves. Now uh, move on click, brightness. Another thing here, which we would see, let me go back over to the location jumper, is um, uh, move on timeout, move on click, delay before move, and that and opacity. So I may want to keep this visible if they're clicking on it, but if it's set to, um, to, to automatically jump over time, we may not need to actually have them see it. So for example, I'll go to the next slide here, basic overhead, 
In this one here, I have the same elements. I've added a countdown timer here. We've added some text. I have a location jumper. If I don't, if I want to make this happen automatically, I may not want to show it to them. So I would click on that location jumper, and I'd say, um, I'd say opacity, and then drop the opacity to zero. So now they're not going to see it there, and that would, um, that would though, because this one is set for timeout. I can look at that, move on timeout. See that says yes. Then what's going to happen is this is going to delay uh, 20 seconds and then move to the slide which is set in move to, which this one happens to be next location. So I'm going to say done here. I'm going to now go to my next slide. This is just a basic overhead. Here's now the more elaborate overhead where you saw the engines. You can see we bring in a picture and I show for pictures we go to utility and then picture and that will let us load a picture. And what will happen here is I use the timing to actually show it progress. So for example, in the later ones here, this is going to be time to come in, let's say after five or 10 seconds. I click on this one and I say, um, I say delay timing. And here I have fade in and fade out settings. Um, and so this is where I would have it fade in after five seconds and fade out, let's say after 15 seconds as the truck is moving to the next spot here. One of the critical things though here you'll do um, normally that timing is based on when the scenario starts. If you're doing this kind of fancy timing, what you want to do is make sure your timing actually starts when you get to the location, which is this slide. Otherwise your timing will be based on when the person started the overall scenario and things will get messed up. So make sure if you're doing this fancy kind of in, in the within the slide timing that your timing begins at the uh, when the location is there. So now you'll see here I have the uh, this the audio clip and here I, I might actually see it. it is already set to zero just sort of showing when I'm editing here and I actually also have the location jumper and I can see the elements that are hidden if I use the selection rotator you'll see it will go over and it will let me select the things that are hidden so if I wanted to change my location jumper as I already had I would use the jump use the selection rotator and now I can actually edit the things like move to timeout and everything like that. So this is something where you have sort of a fluid um, um, responding unit get to where you want it to be. And um, when we get to the next one, it can just go to the next one. Uh, let's say I'll go to that one is that's uh, overhead. I'm going to now go to the responding screen. So this is now where you just bring a picture of the cab in and then put in things like the location jump or responding. If you want to be more fancy, uh, and we actually have a package for this. If I go to the cab view, we actually have a free picture of an interior of a cab with have these cut out. So what happens here is that, let me go and show you the actual picture. This, um, this is actually a picture. You see how this is a, a picture with transparency and you can get a free one we have on our photos for SIM website, photos for SIM. If I actually go here and search for a cab view, we have that sort of cab cutout. So you'll see here road view from inside. You'll be able to download this package and you'll get that picture. And once you have that picture, you can then bring it in again with the add picture. So I go plus utility add picture. And that would then allow you to bring in the, the, the sort of this cutout view. Um, and so we can see actually if I'm here, you'll see that's the actual background with the road scene. And I'm just putting the picture over it. So hopefully this is giving you, uh, there's honk horn, you'll see that there's also the audio uh, thing underneath it. If I actually want to go in and modify that honk horn, I'm using the selection rotator. That's the, that's the audio clip and here's where I had set the opacity down to zero. So that's why you didn't see that audio clip under there. When I wanted to honk the horn, what I would do is actually say, uh, go down to play on tap. So normally the audio starts with the timing, whatever scenario time it is, but play on tap is going to say only play when you actually hit the, 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 actually press the button. One last thing about audio for the siren, when I bring the siren in with the audio clip, I want to make sure to loop the audio. So that, so this normally will say no, it would only go through once, but if I say loop, then it's there. And again, I may want to make that, um, that opacity of zero so that it's not shown. So let me go brown and bring it there. Let me go bring that to zero. And now you'll see when I actually, and I'll bring this location jumper also opacity to zero. And then we'll see there and I hit play and you'll see they're not showing up there, but I do have my horn. So hopefully this has given you a couple ideas of how to make your sequence 
with the timing, the location jumpers, adding audio clips, and the siren seems kind of neat, but it is really annoying. Please let us know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help um, make your own responding, figure out what you need. Thank you.